Hi, I'm Dr. Didi Lemesman uh, of University Pain Medicine Center. I'm the medical director of University Pain Medicine Center, and I'm also the director of pain management at St. Peter's University Hospital, and I'm fellowship director of the JFK Pain Fellowship Program, and also on the advisory board of the Bella Magazine. So today I'm here with Mrs. Joan, who presents with back pain and leg pain. We call that radiculopathy, back pain with radiculopathy where a patient, in addition to having the back pain, they're gonna have back pain going down to the leg as well, where it presents as pins and needles, numbness, or electricity going down to the leg. Mrs. Jones have a long protracted history, meaning that she's had the pain for about 10 years. She had uh, treatment options, including epidurals, uh, nerve blocks, anti-inflammatory medications, and eventually had surgery for the back pain now. After having the surgery, she continues to have back pain and pain down to the legs. So we call that a failed back surgery syndrome when a patient has previous back surgery and continues to have any pain, uh, leg pain. So there's different reasons why failed back surgery can develop. It can be anywhere from scar tissues around the nerve after the surgery. Sometime after getting a lumbar fusion, for example, a patient can have uh, uh, pain above and below where the fusion was done. And sometimes the surgery can, uh, you can have what they call a pseudoarthrosis where the surgery doesn't take too well. Okay, so for a patient with fell back surgery syndrome, which is back and leg pain that develops after a patient going through a surgical intervention, we in the practice offer minimally invasive procedures to treat the patient with fell back surgery syndrome. So the physical examination consists of inspection, palpation, and doing a neurological examination. So I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Jones to stand. So the first thing that we do, we it's inspection part where we observe the patient's upper torso and back for abnormal bulk, meaning that if there's any muscles that tends to be a little bit more bulkier than others, indicating there can be some pathologies. We also look for size of scoliosis, etc. So when we're doing our palpation, we press in the area, like for example, of tenderness to elicit whether there's any spasms present. In this case here, you would actually see spasm because you can actually feel it directly there. And a lot of time you can elicit pain in the patient. And we do the same thing as well in the yes. patient's back by pressing in the back as she's responding here. So there's a lot of spasms present. And we also look for what we call the sacroiliac joint, which is here and here. So these are the sacroiliac joints. You want to make sure there's no pathologist present there as well. The other part of the examination involves like uh, asking the patient to flex forward as much as possible. So if the patient is limited with restriction, we can infer some type of pathology. For example, flexing forward, if it reproduces the patient's pain, may be suggestive of disc disease. Whereas if we ask the patient to extend posteriorly, Ouch. and if the patient has pain during this process, may be indicative of what we call facet syndrome, which is actually the joints of the lumbar spine. In addition to that, we're gonna ask the patient to sit down and we're gonna do a strength examination where we're gonna ask you to lift your leg up as much as possible. Very, very good. And then we compare it to the other one as well by lifting the leg up and asking her to push forward and to do the same thing here. So we're testing if there's any signs of weakness or inability to do so, which can be an indication of some nerve compromise. Part of the neurological examination also involves the reflex exam. So the reflex examination is done at the L3, L4, which is actually the knee, which represents the L3, L4 nerve root, and the ankle represent the L5 nerve root. So if a patient has any reduction of the knee reflex by doing the knee examination, by the knee reflex, if it's diminished or if it's hyper reflex, meaning that if it's actually stronger than expected, that can be indication of some kind of neurological issues going on. And the same thing as well gets done at the level of the ankle, where we would test for the reflex at the ankle. If present, it means that uh, the 
neurological system may be intact, but if it's diminished, there may be some abnormalities going with the neurological system. If you have any further questions, I invite you to please look at our website, uh, which will be provided, and you can also give us a call. We'll be more than happy to evaluate you. Thank you very much for your time.